Hey everyone, this is the first video in a new series I've been working on as an introduction to Pro Tools. I've uploaded two tutorials already that I created primarily to show a friend how to get started, but they somehow ended up being the most watched videos on this channel. However, based on some feedback you've given me, I wanted to try to create a more structured course that covers this content in a bit more detail. For those of you who follow me for my creative projects, I promise this channel is not moving over to tutorials completely. In fact, I plan to utilize some of the ad revenue from these and my other tutorials to continue to fund my creative work. If you're not interested in the tutorials, that's totally fine and you're welcome to skip them. But if you're new here, I'd love it if you check out my other projects on this channel, especially my audio drama series, The Elysium Project, which is also available for free as a podcast on platforms like iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and many others. As a second disclaimer, this series is not going to focus on music production. You can absolutely use the techniques I'll be covering to create music in Pro Tools, or honestly in any other audio editors. But I want to talk more about how to use the software itself so you can apply it to just about anything. That and my background is in classical music and sound design, so you probably don't want me teaching you about music production anyway. So to get started, we'll get ready to open up Pro Tools. I'll mostly be using Pro Tools first in this series, mainly because it has everything we're gonna start covering. Plus it's free to use. It's really nice for getting your feet wet and seeing if Pro Tools itself is a good fit for you. It still works exactly like Pro Tools, only with a few limitations. Honestly, my only complaint with it is that the cloud functionality can really get buggy at some times. So you definitely wanna make sure you're current with your updates and save frequently. Personally, I tend to use Pro Tools first only if I need to edit one or two tracks at a time and don't want to be at my desktop to do it. Some videos may include sections that cover how the full version of Pro Tools is different, but I'll let you know what to skip if that information isn't relevant to you if you're using just Pro Tools first. So if you have an audio background and want to change the sample rate of your project, you need to make that change before you do anything to set up the project itself. In the full version of Pro Tools, we get this menu to set up our project parameters with every session you start, but the lack of this flexibility is one of the few limitations you'll run into with Pro Tools first. Luckily, you can change both the sample rate and bit depth for your final export. To change the sample rate of the project ahead of time, you actually need to cancel out of the Create Project Dashboard window. Click on your desktop or on another application, then back to Pro Tools. Only then can you change the sample rate in the Playback Engine window. The sample rate should always be at least the size of your final settings, since you can't go back in and add samples after you've recorded. Now, if this means absolute gibberish to you, but still want to know what that means, the short version is that a smaller sample rate and bit depth will keep your file sizes smaller. Bigger rates make them larger, but also higher quality. But let's talk more about what that actually means for just a minute here, because I've seen a few situations where this has actually caused problems before. On the surface, higher quality sounds great, but go too high and your computer processor can't keep up or it burns through hard drive space in no time. If you're also sending out files regularly, you want them to sound good, but not take forever to upload. Or sometimes you're just curious what these crazy numbers mean. Most of you probably know about or have at least seen a diagram of a sound wave that looks kind of like this. It's an easy to recognize visual representation of sound. When your computer records audio from something like a microphone, it's simply printing out the waves that your voice or instrument produced onto a track. So let's say this image represents a sound during one second of time. If we told the computer to make a copy of this wave by marking out what points it reached eight times during that second, we're going to get eight different points like this. Now, pretending that we're the computer trying to connect the dots automatically, we end up with a bunch of jagged and straight lines like this that don't quite capture exactly the same shape of the sound. In fact, if I were to play this through a computer, it'd sound really ugly and kind of robotic. Now, if I added twice as many points, or took 16 samples a second, suddenly the wave would start to look more round and closer to the original. 
That's basically sample rate in a nutshell. Except instead of 8 or 16, the standard is to collect something like 40,000. Bit depth is basically the same idea, except you're drawing the lines horizontally. And we can only mark our sample points on the lines or round them to the nearest closest line. This is another thing that can impact how good our sound actually is. Realistically speaking, as long as your sample rate is over 44.1 kilohertz, which also means 44,100 samples a second, and your bit depth is at least 16 bits, which actually comes out to something like 65,000 horizontal lines going through your waveform, you will almost never be able to tell the difference in quality unless you're really into audio gear or playing your files through high-end equipment. You can choose your file sizes based on this at your own discretion. So with all of that out of the way, we're ready to start a new project by clicking Create. Now we have a brand new Pro Tools session. In the next video, we'll add tracks and get our settings squared away. Thanks, guys.